Hello, here's a video, um, a short video, on uh, one of the exam questions at our university on uh, structural behaviour. And it's to do with uh, just a kind of a, a, an outline understanding of the way that structures behave. Now, this question is multiple choice. We have a truss laid out at the start, the two point loads. The key things are that the truss is um, made up of squares and diagonals at 90 degrees. It's on a pin support and a horizontal roller. Two forces, each of value P, are applied to the truss. Now I have to decide which of these four um, diagrams correctly represents the compression and tension or zero force in the members of the truss. And the way I'm going to do that is by making use of Lots of the um, lots of the ideas that we use in the method of joints, except in, instead of doing some kind of complicated um, maths, I'm just going to be using um, something quite straightforward, <laughs> just you know, values of p and the like. Now then, here's my um, here's my truss. I'm going to start off by by just reminding myself that I'm going to be using the, um, the the equilibrium equations that sum of all the vertical forces at any point on the truss or for the truss as a whole add up to zero and that the sum of the horizontal forces also add up to zero either at a joint or uh, for the truss as a whole. So the first thing I want to do now after that is to work out the reactions on the truss. Now, there are two supports here, and the first of these two supports uh, is a pin. Now for a pin, here we go. A pin support uh, is different to a horizontal roller in that a pin support can provide horizontal and vertical restraint. So I'd be expecting two reactions at the pin support and just one at the horizontal roller. Okay, now if I have a look at the, uh, the truss diagram, I can see that I'm going to end up with the vertical force here, a horizontal force here, and the vertical force at this end. Okay, the truss is equal, equally spaced loads. I'm, I think it's kind of self-evident uh, that each of these vertical forces adds up to P. So we've got two P's going up, two P's coming down. The whole thing is symmetrical. Very good. What about this force, this horizontal reaction here? Well, if there are no horizontal forces applied to the truss, I know that's going to be zero. You might think that's a little bit lame to put a, take trouble to put the arrow in and then label it as zero, but we'll see how we get on. Um, now. The next thing I want to do is just use the method of joints and uh, I'm going to start off at the easiest joint I can see. And the easiest joint on the job is this top right hand corner. So at the top right hand corner, if I draw out that joint, uh, there you go, I'll just draw it out. If I resolve horizontally at that joint, there are no forces applied to it, therefore there must be no force in that number. If I resolve vertically, there are no vertical forces here, therefore the force in that number must be zero. We go back to the truss diagram and just add that on. Zero and zero. If I go back to the question, are there any trusses that don't have zero and zero at the top right hand joint? Yes, so I can knock out uh, C. I know it is not C. Okay, so it's not. I'll just make a note of that, not C. And I'm going to carry on to the next joint, and the next easiest joint on the job, I think, is the one at the bottom left-hand corner. So here we go, let's draw that out. There, it's got a vertical force of P at that point, and it's got a zero force there. So now if I resolve vertically at that joint, what have I got? Just for this joint, I've got P going up, Therefore, if I resolve vertically, I've got a force P going up. There must be 
before it's P coming down somewhere and yes it's got to be in this vertical member the horizontal members have no effect when I resolve vertically that must be P coming down and if I resolve horizontally I know that there's zero force here therefore I know that there must be zero force in that member because there are no applied horizontal loads and the joint is in equilibrium therefore this must be zero Great. I'm going to mark that up on my truss diagram that this joint is in compression to the tune of P and this joint's got nothing on it. Well, does that help me get any closer to the answer? Well, I know it's not C. Well, at A, I've got compression and tension here. Ah, but I know that there is no tension in that bottom member because I've just calculated or worked out that there is actually a zero force in that bottom member. So it's now I now know it's neither C nor A. I'm moving forward in my exam. Okay. What's the next place to get to? Hmm. Well, let's have a look at the exam question again. In the exam question, the difference between these two is not along the bottom or the top or the ends it's just these two internal members here okay these ones are in tension these have zero force I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to work my way towards these two members from the outside of the truss working in from one of the supports to get there okay in mind let's see how I get on so I'm gonna draw out the um, the joint at the bottom right I already know some of the something about that joint, so let's get going. Right. Drawing out the joint, that's P, that's zero. Don't know much else. I've got a diagonal member, so I'm going to draw the load triangle next to it. There's my load triangle. Okay. Right. So if I resolve vertically now. I know that that diagonal member has a vertical component and a horizontal component. So when I resolve vertically, I've got force P moving up. Nothing in this member. I've just found that out earlier. And <coughs> this horizontal has nothing to add vertically. This does. So this, this vertical member here, this vertical component of the diagonal force must be a value P pushing down so that the joint is in equilibrium. If this is a 90 degree load triangle, a 90 degree load triangle with 45 degrees here, it must be isosceles, therefore that length must equal that length. So I know that H is also going to equal P and it must be acting to the right. Okay, so this diagonal member is pulling down and to the right okay so it's in compression at that joint right, I'll mark that up on my truss diagram so it's in compression there and it must be in compression at the top great what about this member at the bottom well if I resolve horizontally now I've got a force of P pushing to the right no other uh, horizontal forces or horizontal members other than the bottom member therefore that must be force P pushing to the left great that's when I say pushing to the left it must be pulling to the left that therefore must be in uh, tension and it happens to be in tension to the value P great let's move on so we've done the bottom joint now I think we need to look at uh, this joint here at the top. And we'll get on with that. So draw that joint out. It's got a diagonal member, so I'll show the load triangle. I know that this is in compression, and I also know that it's got components of P and P, vertical and horizontal components of P. I also know that this top member here, 
It's got zero force in it. Right. What can I work out at this joint? Well, I can resolve vertically or horizontally. Let's resolve horizontally first. I'm going to resolve horizontally. Zero force here. I've got force P pushing to the left. There's only one force that I don't know in this member here. Therefore, for this joint to be in equilibrium, in horizontal equilibrium, there must be a force P pushing to the right. Okay, now when I resolve vertically, this diagonal member has a force P pushing up. These horizontal members have no effect. So we've got P pushing up, a single vertical member, it must have P pulling down. Okay, I'll draw this on here. There it is. It's in tension at the top, so it must be tension at the bottom. Right. And I've also worked out oops, that this member here is in compression to the value of P. Great. We're not there yet, but we're getting closer. Now, finally, I can consider the top joint. Uh, sorry, the bottom joint uh, where the load P is applied. So let's draw that out. Okay. There it is with its diagonal member. And that diagonal member must have vertical and horizontal components with its internal force. Uh, let's draw this force P hanging out there at the bottom. And I know that I've got a force P pulling to the right, and I've got a force P pulling up. I've got this from other parts of um, the work that I've just carried out. Now, what can I what can I find out about this member here? Because this is going to be the key to my solving this exam question. Uh, if I resolve horizontally, all I can do is resolve horizontally or vertically. So if I resolve horizontally, I'm going to have two unknowns. I'm going to have the horizontal component of the diagonal and this member here. I've only got one equation. That's not helping me. How about if I resolve vertically? Well, there's quite a few members vertically, but there's only one unknown. That's the vertical component of this diagonal member. So, let's resolve vertically. Uh, let's see. I've got P coming down, P going up, and therefore the vertical component of this diagonal member must be zero. Because if it was anything other than zero, the joint would be out of balance. I know from my uh, triangular forces that uh, this fellow must be zero also, therefore there must be no force in that number. Well, I'll finish off the joint just because uh, I'm that, that, that kind of person. If I now resolve horizontally, I've got a P to the right, nothing to the left from the diagonal, therefore this must be P to the left. Great. Now let's get back to So I now know that this little member here, it's got zero, and this fellow at the bottom has got uh, P in tension. Okay, right, I'd like to compare that now with the answers in the exam. Here are the two remaining answers, B and D. Only B has zero force in the middle member, therefore I'm going to circle B because I've worked out that this correctly corresponds with the forces in the uh, truss that I've worked out using the method of joints. Well, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.